Hi there, it's Peter again. Just wanted to say hi. I have been getting so many calls recently about young children who have been waking up at night because they can't sleep, been having nightmares, dreams, even talking about ghosties. And it's quite amazing because after doing this work for since 1985 when I first started uh, getting into it if you like so I've never had so many calls in such a short period of time consistently over the last nine ten months about young people young children who have been seeing things I mean I've been getting calls for the last few years don't get me wrong but we're talking about children as young as four and a half was the last one I went to amazing little boy very extraordinary sort of story but you know he'd been having nightmares and screaming from the age of one and uh, of course unable to tell his parents what was going on they kept reassuring him put him back to bed and then when he was getting a bit older 18 months and talking he spoke to his mother about the ghosties in the room he even got to the point when they were asking him more about this he was able to give the name of the three prominent ghosts or the name of two of them anyway and she was able to, the mother was able to Google all these names and found it was exactly as he said, the age of the person and the name, and that they had died in the local area as a local builder, which was what the little boy said. And so she was gobsmacked, really. I've also been to a number of homes where the young children are waking up because they're also aware of something coming towards them, someone, and maybe a figure there which is telling them to be quiet or to not make any noise, not to tell anyone. Of course, you know, even if they're a friendly ghost, it's very frightening even as an adult to wake up in the night in, a, in that sort of shocked sort of state where you're aware of something at the bottom of the bed. I mean, I remember experiencing that myself. And it, it's really, I remember my heart beating and so loudly, I remember saying to my heart, you stop making noise, they'll hear you, you know, be quiet, all those sort of things. And of course, what we want to do is for our young children we don't want to become a habit where they become scared to go to bed the bedroom becomes a trigger for it's going to be a bad night's sleep and the bad man or scary people are going to be there and the problem is if it's been going on for some time even if as a medium if I went in there and, and cleared that energy or if anyone else cleared the energy and uh, made sure it's a safe lovely room to go into as soon as the child goes in to that room they think nighttime, scary time, and then where are they? As soon as you're looking for them, and then you begin to open a doorway, and you open that part of your uh, sensitivity to allow yourself to draw something back in again. And if it's not there, then your mind can create something out of the imagination. That can be just as scary. So it can take quite a while to break the habit, as I know from personal experience, and to get that discipline in, in there. So here's what I suggest. First of all, if you have a child which is obviously very sensitive and finds that, and you'll know that they're, they're sensitive because they're sensitive to, to lights, bright lights, loud noises, sensitive to maybe your emotions. Um, if you're feeling sad, they'll come up and give you a hug and you want, you know, it's like they sense, they know. You tend to feel when you look into their eyes that they're an old soul in a young body, that sort of feeling. You may find as well that they tend to be very creative, they're very thoughtful. Um, they love being outdoors, that's always a sign of a, of a, a child which is a, a, a free spirit, they love to have that freedom. But they also have a great imagination, sometimes that can work against you as well as, as for you as well. So they need to be encouraged as a child to express themselves, they need to be able to, if possible, get them into dancing, singing, going to drama classes, stage school, um, get them to, to learn music, to sing along to music. Get them to be out of doors and outdoor activities as much as you can because this allows them to be in touch with their soul, in touch with the spirit, which allows them to be free. There's nothing worse as a spirit um, that feels already quite limited is to, to be trapped within four walls. You need to have that freedom of expression. So with a child, it's good to do that, always to reassure them. And I think also make their room a special room. So you need to make sure if you're a feel there may be something in that room it's always a good idea um, to get a friend around or someone who is quite knowledgeable about these things they don't have to be a medium it can be just someone who's sensitive to energy and you can probably google and find a few things that will help you for clearing the energy of rooms but here's what i would suggest 
is I would get rid of any old furniture in that room you don't feel comfortable with, i.e. old furniture being left behind from previous occupants, uh, furniture left behind that's been maybe passed on from dead relatives. It may not always have an energy which is uh, a happy memory attached to it. Put in furniture and things in that room that represent what that child loves or makes them feel happy. For instance, you know, if a child loves, um, uh, loves uh, a particular, say they love Spider-Man, then bring in lots of the, the Spider-Man images because it, they kind of get into that role where they can feel very empowered. If they love Harry, Harry Potter, you know, get in the Harry Potter outfit and have Harry Potter around because Harry Potter is magical. So in the child, he too is magical. Give him a little um, replica wand and say, say to him, this wand, like Harry Potter, when you've got this wrong wand, is magical and you can change anything and you can make things disappear and you can make things appear. You know, that's how powerful you are. In that child's mind, it believes in that story and therefore it becomes empowered rather than vulnerable and helpless. So you create the environment for the child which makes it that, that resonates with its or the belief system it has and you're creating a different story a story which is powerful and magical. So that's important to do that. The next thing that uh, you want to do is get some white sage and burn the sage. So basically you're smudging. White sage has, has always been used to clear negative energy. So basically the white sage has a very pleasant smell. It can be bought off eBay very cheaply. But make sure you turn off any smoke alarms. I've set off a number of smoke alarms doing the smudging myself, uh, which is not a good idea, I can tell you. But anyway, burn the sage as you let go walk around the room you are also giving a blessing to the room you're also creating a clear intention you're asking for all negative energies that do not belong to that room to be removed and be taken away you ask for light love and blessings and joy to come into the room you ask for old thought forms old emotions that from the past to be released from that home and that room home and aura the furniture in it those that come into the room feel safe and peaceful so you create a very clear intention that just comes from the heart. You've done that. You can also, if you feel that there's been um, that the the person in that room has been bothered by uh, by spirit, by earthbound spirits, as well as smudging, what you can also do is get some sea salt, and the sea salt represents the soul of the body. So you take the sea salt and you sprinkle it around the edges of the room. So really, what it's saying is anything that enters that room has to be in harmony with the soul. The next thing you do is also you can buy, buy bees pollen. And you can buy it from any health food stores or have bees pollen because it's a health product. And you take that bees pollen and again, sprinkle it around the outside of the, of the room or sprinkle it particularly on windowsills and door frames. Again, the entries to the room and bees pollen represents order and respect as within a bees colony. So again, the vibration of order and respect is sending out a very clear message to spirit who may be drawn to the light or energy of a young soul or someone in that room who's quite psychic. If it's an older person, you need to really to also show them how to protect their sensitivity. They need to close down their sensitivity to protect their aura. If they're doing uh, psychic things, um, then that's not going to help last thing at night because it means the mind is still quite switched on to those energies. So you need to better to get them to do things which are the opposite of that. Do things that calm them down. You could even get put some lavender on their pillow. You can need to use some uh, rescue spray. It's very good to help with sleeping as well. And the reason rescue spray works is you spray it under the tongue and it relaxes the nervous system. So if it relaxes the nervous system, it's the nervous system which becomes stressed at night time. As you have got nothing else to distract you, you then start to think of other things that may be going on. So. If you spray under the tongue with, uh, with Rescue Remedy, you'll actually find that you become calmer. If you wake up in the night, you can have another spray. It's quite harmless, but it will help you to sleep. If you sleep, you feel more relaxed, more comfortable, and you're bringing about a better conditioning to uh, the triggers that normally the bedroom had been doing or going to bed had been doing. Now it represents sleep rather than, than a sleepless night. So that's another thing you can do. Also just change the theme of the room. Just move the bed to a different area of the room. Be aware that some uh, homes will have, uh, can, can be a problem with geopathic stress. Uh, there's some very good books uh, that you can read about geopathic stress, which can come from deep line um, underwater streams, uh, up, you know, well below the ground. And just the shifting, gentle shifting of the earth can create a different polarity. That energy can come up through the home 
And if you have a geopathic stress line coming through a room where someone sleeps, then you'll actually find it can actually manifest as a health issue or it can be something that causes worry and anxiety. And if you're not sure where it's coming from, it's quite easy to get that checked out and also changed as well. You know, when you go into a room and you see a child which is asleep, squashed right at the far corner of the bed, it may be telling you that they're unconsciously trying to get away from an energy field which makes them uncomfortable. Sometimes animals do this as well. Uh, but again, do a bit of research on it, and there's some simple ways of being able to, um, to, to check that out and then to do something about it. So it's important to do things like this. I think also have a soft light on in the room as well for a child. It's very reassuring to have a small light. Uh, it just takes away the shadows, which can often cause a problem if they wake up in the night. A shadow can be a big, scary figure. But with a soft light, it can actually be quite reassuring that the room is just nice and comfortable and, and that'd be nice. I think also make sure you've got co a different colour scheme, maybe different bed sheets, create a different image. Um, I remember hearing of a, of a young man who couldn't sleep at night and they were very worried about him. He was 14 years of age, it was affecting him in relation to his studying and his exams. And asking further questions, we actually found that he was a, an avid supporter of Manchester United and so everything in that room was dark red. Um, the walls were red, his, his uh, bed sheets were red, and basically because he was a sensitive child, he was, being, uh, he was being sensitive to the red, and the red is an energy color. So, you know, there he's trying to sleep, but everything's coming more alive. And so, you know, I said to, me, I said to the mother, you don't need to get to change teams, but maybe get the color which represents the away kit at that time with a different color, which they did that, and immediately his sleep pattern improved. So again, there's some simple solutions to uh, to a child or young person not sleeping and if you're not sure maybe just send me an email or send me a text and uh, message me and I'll see if I can help and I can always put another video clip on about that but anyway I hope this has been helpful insightful and just gives you some uh, further understanding of the things we we can come up against in our life and so happy sleeping that's all I can say and thank you for listening to another video of mine thank you bye bye